Jesus says, or he asks the, 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 the disciples, if you want to be first, and who doesn't want to be first? Ask a group of kids who wants to go first. I'll jump up. Let me go first. Me, me, me. It's kind of one of those instincts in us that we want to be first. We want to excel. We want to be the greatest. I think it's why so many young football players want to go play for Alabama these days. <laughs> People want like to be first. So that's one of those instincts in us, in a way, one of those passions that uh, we learn as we become adults and as we, more, we become more mature to sort of suppress that. It's still there, but we learn to you know, be more socially acceptable. No, no, you go first. It's okay. But often inside we're like, no, I'd like to really be first. Right? So there's that war that's going, in with, going on within us that, that uh, St. James is talking about today. Where do these wars and conflicts arise from? Where do they come from? They come from your passions that make war within your members, is what he said. Really encourage you to take this uh, second reading and read and pray and reflect over it. In fact, you could read that whole little book of St. James and matter of, you know, 15 or 20 minutes and you can do it perfectly. You know, that, 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 that desire to excel, to be first, to be the greatest is the basis of really all of our, all kinds of competition that we engage in. So, what's wrong with the, the having strong passions? Really, there's nothing wrong within themselves. You've heard the saying, um, emotions are neither right nor wrong, they just are. And that's true to a certain extent. What happens is that we often get ruled by our emotions, by our feelings, by our Instead of us ruling them, they rule us. And if our passions are not properly ordered, then we are a disordered person. We're disordered within ourselves. And therefore, it spills out into our family life, into our parish life, into our community, into our world. And therefore, we have a disordered world. So that's the problem. We have disordered passions. So what's the solution? Well, St. James says uh, we've got to submit those basically to the wisdom that is from above. Now we're at war within ourselves so much. You know, our passions can really dominate us. We can let anger get the better of us. And then we can lash out at the person that made us angry. Sometimes we'll lash out at whoever crosses our path because of how we're feeling. If we wake up in a grumpy mood, then we're going to be grumpy all day. If we don't submit and surrender and, sub uh, and allow our, the God's grace to curb and fashion our minds and our hearts. See, we need a power from above to help us properly order our passions. So listen to what St. James says. He says, the wisdom from above is, first of all, it's pure, it's peaceable, it's gentle, it's compliant, it's full of mercy and good fruits. There's no con inconstancy or insincerity and the wisdom that's from above. Wisdom is one of those gifts of the Holy Spirit that was given to us at our baptism and then in a special way given to us through the sacrament of confirmation. Wisdom is that gift that allows us to see things from God's perspective. It's 
It's the view from the mountain top to see things with the eyes of God. Instead of just seeing things from our own little narrow, selfish, self-centered perspective, which is how we tend to see things, wisdom allows us to see things from God with God's eyes, to see ourselves and to see others, to see the situations that we're in with God's eyes. So Jesus asked the disciples, uh, so what were you arguing about along the way? And they all remained silent. Not even Peter speaks up this time. They're a little, they're a little bit ashamed when Jesus calls them out. And why is that? It's because they had been arguing about which of them was the greatest. Now to us, that kind of sounds absurd, but if you've taken time to watch that series called The Chosen that's, uh, that's uh, being released, it's a fascinating way of looking at the call of the early apostles, it's those who were chosen by Jesus to, to follow him. You see how they, in their, showing the humanity of those, of those early disciples, how they're, they're arguing about who's who should be in charge often? And they're arguing about their, their status. You know, we often get so preoccupied about our status, either in our group or, or at work. We get so bent out of shape and we don't feel we get the, the esteem that we deserve. When people cross our path and are, are, don't treat us exactly the way we feel we deserve, man, we can lash out. We get so bent out of shape about that. So Jesus sits them down and says, okay, if anyone wants to be first, now Jesus seems to me, he's not saying you shouldn't want to be first. Guess what? To want to excel in holiness is a really good thing. See, if you think about all the great saints and all the great figures of history, they were people of an immense passion, very intense emotions and feelings. But they learned to channel those in ways that were healthy, that were good, that served others. So, so he says, if you want to be first, then you shall be the last of all and the servant of all. You'll be happy that you're put down, that you're ignored. You'll be happy that you're persecuted even. Now, that's a really hard place to get to for us, isn't it? Usually if we're persecuted in any way, shape, or form, we react pretty angrily. So they're driving home, Jesus takes a little child and, and he says, probably is Jesus when the scripture is talking about a little two or three year old. And Jesus probably sat down on the ground with this child. And it says, putting in his arms around it, he said, whoever receives one child such as this in my name receives me. And whoever receives me receives not me, but the one who sent me. You know, a little child has nothing to give us, really. He has some love and affection, but this is just an act of caring for this little being. How do you impress a three-year-old? You don't take him out and show him, show him or her your Porsche. How do you impress a two- or three-year-old by getting down on the ground with them and making funny faces and making weird, funny noises? Uh, wrapping your arms around them and showing them love. It's what Jesus is trying to bring home to the disciples. If you want to be the greatest, then get out on the floor and make funny noises and funny faces with the children. Humble yourself. Be willing to be last. Be willing to serve others. Not to be expected to be served. That's not the way of the Lord Jesus Christ. 
You know, the St. Teresa of Little Flower compared herself to a, a, a little child. Her, her way was called the little way. She said, I'm like a toddler with arms outstretched, knowing that my loving, faithful father will pick me up when I, when I need his love. This image of Jesus with the little child is an image that is meant for all of us. That's how God wants to be with us and it's how He wants us to be with one another. So yeah, let's desire to be first, but let's be first in holiness, first in love, first in serving each other and serving God. Wanna, today I want to do a couple of just practical things um, at the end of this homily. Um, last week, uh, we inserted in the bulletin the financial stewardship report for this past year. And I hope you had a chance to look it over. If you didn't, or you weren't here last week, uh, last weekend there's financial reports out on the round table in the bulletin in the narthex. And it's also available on our, on our website. So our financial year is a fiscal year. It runs from July to June. So this is the report for June, July 2020 to June 2021. The bottom line is always, are we cash flow positive? In other words, are we bringing in more money than we're spending or not? And so this year, for the first time in many years, we were cash flow negative. Um, we were about $25,000 cash flow negative. We did receive from the uh, loan from the government, it's called the Payroll Protection Plan, the PPP, um, and we're, it doesn't look like we're going to have to pay that back, and so that helped to cover the difference in our, with our shortfall. But if you've got questions about our financial report, or if you want to, we do a, what's called a narrative uh, financial report, stewardship report. If, uh, if you'd like to see more of the details, I'm happy to release that to folks that ask for it. This the way that we do it. I hope it makes more sense to people so you can understand where your donations go and how we're using the resources that you that you donate to the, to the parish. The bottom line is for me to say how deeply grateful I am, how your generosity edifies and inspires me. Um, there's no way that St. Mary's functions without your donations and your generosity. So I'm deeply grateful for your for your generosity. Especially this year, last year being a COVID year is a very challenging year. So I really appreciate your generosity. And also the, we can give a financial report for the school. Um, and the school had the same situation about the same deficit of about twenty-five thousand dollars. And uh, school also received a payroll protection plan loan from the government and that we're, we don't think we're going to have to, re, we're, we're, we're sure we're not going to have to repay it and uh, so that helped to cover that deficit. Last year we had a total of 208 students at the school and this year we have 206. Um, in fact, I think we picked up another one, another student uh, just on Friday for the kindergarten. So uh, um, the the auction and the gala um, raised for Sacred Heart and St. Mary's both about two hundred forty thousand dollars that we split. That was very successful. I'm really grateful for all the hard work and all the time and effort that people, uh, everybody put into that. And uh, again, thank you for your generosity for that. The last thing I want to encourage you about in a practical way is to uh, um, think about the plan on uh, attending um, either the Either, either or, or do one or the other, or do both. This next weekend, we're going to have a Life of the World uh, Parish Retreat. Um, I think every single Catholic, everyone that takes their faith seriously, should do a retreat every year. If it's a day, great, at least a day, better a weekend, even better three or four days. Um, deacons and priests are required to do a retreat each year. Um, I think everybody should do a few days of retreat every single year. If you're going to take your spiritual life serious, you should take a period of time each year to really assess where you're at with God's call to be.
be the best version of yourself? Um, how well are we surrendering our lives into God's hands and being faithful to Him? So this next weekend, we have a Light of the World Parish Retreat. I encourage you to think about participating in that. It'll start Friday night and go through the weekend. Um, so there will be a person in the narthex to questions about the light of the world. And then the last thing is uh, the pair the diocese is having part of our 50th anniversary celebration a Eucharistic Congress. I'm calling it a Eucharistic revival to uh, deepen our appreciation and our love for the Eucharist, the gift of Jesus Christ in the in the in the Eucharist. And uh, that's going to be on October the 8th and 9th, Friday night and Saturday. We are going to charter a bus to go up on Saturday. So if you'd like to to, to ride the bus, uh, 